Good morning, folks. Happy Friday. We are looking at a very warm day before a monster cool down. Your forecast coming up. Thanks, Jordan. And it's a big day planned for Planned Parenthood in Central Texas. A look at what they hope will happen at a hearing later today and what it could mean for future funding. Feeling the pinch in your paycheck? Why you may notice today's payday looks a little different. You're watching KITV Morning News. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to KITV Morning News on this Friday. I'm Hunter Ellis. And I'm Dita Payton. Thanks so much for waking up with us. We have your weather and traffic together every 10 minutes for you. Erica Harfold is still on vacation, which means right. storm tracker meteorologist Jordan Steele yep. doing double duty again <laughs> today. Hey, Jordan. Hey, good morning, you guys. Happy Friday. Hey, you know what? Today, we're looking to be the warmest we've been in over two weeks. I think many of us could hit 70, so let's get right to it. First off, we're starting off in the 40s. Some of us out in the Hill Country are starting off in the 30s, so a couple locations, a little chilly this morning. I think those folks obviously will need a, a coat or a sweater as you head out the door, but this afternoon, very spring-like. I, like I said, I think many of us will get into the 70s, uh, but right now we're at 43 at Marble Falls. Johnson City, about 10 degrees warmer at 53. Sitting at 46 in Austin, out at the airport, we're at 40 though, so temperatures are ranging just a little bit. Uh, up above, a couple of thin clouds moving across the area, but really nothing to uh, break away the sunshine that we'll see today. I think it's going to be pretty fantastic for your Friday. And then once we go into tonight, that's when we'll start to see increasing clouds and a big weather change as we go into the overnight hours and especially into this weekend. So to plan your day, like I said, this morning, some places chilly. We're starting off in the mid 40s, mid 60s by this uh, by the lunchtime. And then this afternoon, I think we'll hit 70, 73, some places, maybe as high as 74. That southwesterly wind really keeping us nice. Weather and traffic together. Let's take a look at that time saver traffic update. And uh, we're taking a look at I-35 and 51st Street. And you can see it's pretty quiet this morning. Uh, we are seeing a couple of uh, people out on the roadways. But uh, so far with the traffic map, looking all good, meaning green, not really seeing too many delays so far this morning. And uh, it's looking like uh, if you're about to head out the door for folks traveling in from Georgetown, you have about a 20 minute commute, at least from Sand Bass Road to 6th Street. So that's pretty standard at this hour. Folks on uh, traveling southbound on Mopac, you're looking at about a 10 minute commute from Burnett to 5th Street. And if you're heading northbound on Mopac from Slaughter Lane to 5th, you're looking at about a 10 minute commute as well. We'll have another traffic and weather headline coming up in just a minute. All right, smooth sailing so far. Thanks, Jordan. Time right now for the day's top headlines. And this morning, Planned Parenthood is continuing its fight against the state of Texas. Yeah, the health provider is appearing in court asking a state judge to block the enforcement of laws, keeping them from getting into what they say are crucial dollars. KITV's Adam Bennett live at the downtown clinic to show us what's at stake. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Adita. Well, a new year means uh, less money expected to come through the doors of clinics like these. Uh, just about a week and a half ago, a state judge ruled that the state can cut off funding to Planned Parenthood's family planning programs. Uh, this was just a week and a half ago. That kicked in the next day, and today's hearing is just the latest in a battle over that funding. That's uh, on January 1st, state officials began enforcing the law that bans organizations that support abortion rights from receiving state funding. Republican lawmakers who passed the law want to shut down Planned Parenthood in Texas and say that the state has a, quote, anti-abortion policy. Federal officials, in return, have cut funding to the state, saying that the new law violates the Social Security Act. About 90% of the money from the old women's health program, or about $30 million, came from the feds. Planned Parenthood argues that without it, around 50,000 low-income women in Texas will have trouble affording certain screenings and preventative care. The state argues, though, that their new state-funded state -funded women's health program will meet the needs. Reporting live in East Austin this morning, Adam Bennett, KITV Morning News. The hearing starts at 9 o'clock at the Travis County Courthouse and is expected to last all day. Now, this morning, it's a story that has people talking. News of a major arrest by Austin police. Now, we can now tell you that one of the two suspects wanted in the New Year's Day death of 13-year-old Sophia Martinez has been caught. APD, along with the Lone Star Task Force, made the arrest of 23-year-old Jose Ricardo Garcia Zavala for a parole violation in southeast Austin. The cause of her death is still under investigation, but Garcia Zavala and another man have admitted to giving her alcohol on New Year's Eve. At this hour, Mario Angeles Hernandez, the man who reportedly confessed to police that he had inappropriate contact with the teen shortly before her death, well, he's still on the loose. 
And for many, today is payday, the first of 2013. And if you're just waking up this morning, a reminder that the paycheck you pick up today may be a little smaller than you're used to. While lawmakers skirted the fiscal cliff, plenty of Americans will still notice there's a little less money coming their way. That's because the 2% Social Security payroll tax break we've had for the last two years is now gone, so you'll be paying more in taxes. Now, to break it all down, here's an example. It's a 2% increase, so if the average family makes $60,000 a year, that means you'll pay $100 more per month in taxes, adding up to $1,200 a year. Making news this morning, word from Houston police. They've canceled an Amber Alert. This after finding a missing two-year-old and arresting a family friend accused of abducting the child. KTRK TV reporting early this morning that Houston police found Alize Renee Mata late Thursday at an apartment complex with 22-year-old Jacinia Saldana. Alize and Saldana had not been seen since Wednesday when the two left to run errands. Police issued an Amber Alert Thursday after Saldana allegedly missed a planned meeting with the toddler's mother. The television station says Houston police arrested Saldana at the scene. She now faces a kidnapping charge. Well, some strong words for the vice president. What the NRA had to say following their meeting on gun control. Then it's a new year time to take the pledge. The new no tech zone pledge will show you this morning and this morning's Friday with Uncle Fred and show you how to get one of those Fridays with Uncle Fred mug. Mm, my favorite. Good morning, folks. Hey, we are keeping track of a major cool down. That's headed right our direction as we go into this weekend. Your full forecast coming up on the other side of the break. In 2011, there was a fiscal crisis. The U.S. reached its debt ceiling. Spending was out of control. It was the third straight year of trillion dollar deficits, and no one had a plan. A deal was made. The debt ceiling would rise a trillion dollars, and there'd be even more spending. Spending cuts would come later. Later came two weeks ago. Everyone forgot about 2011. Another deal was made. The national debt will increase $4 trillion. Spending will increase. The claim taxes were only raised on those making $400,000 or more is a lie. Check your pay statement. There was only $1 in cuts for every $41 in new spending. Meaningful spending cuts will come later. Sound familiar? By the way, more than $1 trillion in Obamacare tax hikes kicked in on January 1st. You'll feel the effect soon. This isn't a surprise. Every face in Washington who did this to the nation in the last four years was safely reelected. People vote for free goodies they think someone else will pay for. Now look at your children and grandchildren. They're going to have to foot the bill. By the way, Washington wants to raise the debt ceiling yet again in just a few weeks. For more on this story, visit BehindTheHeadlines.net and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Mark Hyman. I thought, uh, yeah, I, yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, can you please count from one to ten so they can test the microphone? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good.
<laughs> Welcome back to KITV News, everybody. Speaking of the weekend, it's going to be a nice one to start out. I yeah, mean. can you believe it's Friday? We made it, and the sun should be shining today, right? Yeah, good, good time to get out there around the lake, maybe get a workout in. But uh, for all the details, let's head over to Jordan Steele. Yeah, good morning, you guys. Happy Friday. We are looking at a, uh, a pretty nice day today before a major temperature shift going in towards the weekend. Bottom line here is keep your winter coats handy because it is getting quite chilly. But let's talk about today. Nice and pleasant. That's your first headline right there. Looking like temperatures today could get up into the 70s. Then we have a cold front punching through, so that means a chance for showers and then a chilly air mass moving through after we get on the back side of that cold front that will move through as we head into next week. Currently this morning, some of us a little cooler than others, but overall mainly uh, we're in the 40s, a couple of upper 40s and even some low 50s like up towards Round Rock and Cedar Park and uh, out at the airport now just dropped down to upper 30s, so a little cooler in the rural areas obviously. A wider view here, we're looking at uh, a couple of 50s like I said in a few 30s just like the uh, metro area, 37 out at Lano, 36 in Kerrville, so some of you folks might need to wake up up and bring a, a coat out the door. Others, maybe not so much, especially you folks in the 50s, because by the time we go into this afternoon, you won't need any of that. It's going to be fantastic. Visibility chart, absolutely perfect. When you look at fog development and you turn it into, uh, uh, in terms of visibility, 10 miles is perfect. So we're not really seeing that fog like we had at this hour yesterday, and that's because of the high clouds. So we have a good southwesterly flow here. Well, some of these clouds will filter the sunshine, but I'm still expecting a good amount of sunshine for today, and that is going to help us be on the warmer side as we go in toward this afternoon. So your temperatures will be anywhere from the upper 60s to low and mid 70s, especially the southern zones have a good chance to hit uh, that mid 70 mark. In fact, out towards the coast today, they have a chance to hit 80. So we're really warming up across the region. Uh, further to the north, I think many of us will be in the lower 70s. Lago Vista, you might be uh, snug down to the upper 60s, but still fantastic all over the neighborhood. Looking ahead, this big cold pool, we talked about this yesterday. That's what's transitioning into Texas as we go going towards this weekend. So today we're on the forefront of the warm air, but by tomorrow that cool air will start to filter through. We might even see a couple of showers out of it. So as we go into your Saturday, you start to notice the chance of uh, showers popping up by Saturday afternoon. Again, the front pushes through. It doesn't look like a lot, but we could see a couple of showers here and there going into Sunday and uh, we'll keep a cloudy forecast for most of next week. So here's your seven day today. Fantastic. Tomorrow and Sunday, we'll start to see the cooler air move through, especially uh, as you get into your Sunday forecast. We're looking quite chilly and then as we go into next week barely pushing the the mid 40 mark and so it's looking quite cool in the next week all right weather and traffic together and since erica harpold is out i'm it let's take a look outside mopac and high ridge uh, looking pretty quiet at this 5 a.m hour good morning to all you folks get on up and at it we're gearing up for the weekend, which is always nice, no matter what the weather pattern is shaping up to be. Moving northward on, from Buda on I-35, you have about a 16-minute commute right now, so not looking too bad. I haven't really seen any reports of any accidents or any uh, major delays, which is good news. Your, your uh, speed right there at William Cannon is about 43, so starting to see just a, a little bit of slowing, but not bad. Moving southbound on 183, you have about a 10-minute commute. And uh, folks heading in from Maynard, you're looking about 10 minutes as well. Weather and traffic coming up in just a couple minutes once again. All right, thanks a lot, Jordan. Well, Vice President Biden says he'll deliver his gun control recommendations to the president by next week. This after he hosted the NRA for a White House meeting to talk about gun control. Now, following the meeting, some members of the group say the White House seems intent on trying to pass new gun control laws. And in response, the group issued a statement saying, quote, we will not allow law-abiding gun owners to be blamed for the acts of criminals and madmen. The Vice President President's working group was formed in response to December school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. And alarming or attention grabbing? Well, this morning we want to hear from you. On Thursday, Matt Drudge used photos of Hitler and Stalin on his website, Drudge Report, to highlight a story about President Obama possibly taking a tough stance on the gun issue by issuing an executive order. While that may sound shocking to several, according to research on Google Trends, interest by web users in recent years has spiked when it comes to learning more about the history of Hitler and gun control. This morning, we invite you to join the conversation with us. All you have to do, head over to Facebook, our Facebook page, and let us know what you think. Well, an update this morning to a case that sent shockwaves through the nation. We're talking, of course, about the Aurora, Colorado movie theater shootings. Yeah, a Colorado judge has ruled that prosecutors have carried their burden of proof and can proceed to trial of accused gunman James Holmes. Uh, Holmes is charged with more than 160 counts of murder and attempted murder for the massacre during a midnight showing of the latest Batman movie. CBS's Teresa Garcia is in Aurora with the very latest. 
A Colorado judge says there is enough evidence for James Holmes to stand trial for the July shooting spree at an Aurora movie theater. Twelve people died and dozens were injured in the attack, which prosecutors say Holmes had planned for weeks. During this week's preliminary hearing, investigators testified that Holmes had been collecting chemicals, body armor, guns, and thousands of rounds of ammunition for the attack. They also detailed how he carefully booby-trapped his apartment with explosives to create a diversion from the theater. Prosecutors also showed cell phone photographs Holmes allegedly took of himself, posing with guns, and his hair dyed bright red-orange. The prosecution says Holmes also photographed both the interior and exterior of this Century 16 theater, including the hinges and door jam of an emergency exit door. They say it was all part of his meticulous preparation for getting in and out of the theater. The next step in the case is for Holmes to enter a plea. If he's found not guilty by reason of insanity, a possible defense strategy, Holmes could one day be released. Tom Teves lost his son Alex in the shooting. I could see it on his face as he was watching the uh, videos of himself. He, he got Obviously. very animated, you know. There's no way that guy's crazy. That guy's evil, but there's no way that guy's crazy. Holmes is scheduled to be arraigned on Friday, but his attorneys have already filed papers saying they are not ready and will likely ask for a delay. Holmes is being held without bail. Teresa Garcia, CBS News, Aurora, Colorado. As Holmes faces trial word this morning, there's been another school shooting, this time in California. Police say a 16-year-old student at a high school in Taft, California, who said he had been bullied, bought, brought a shotgun to school, and shot a classmate before being disarmed by school staff. Now, Taft is about 100 miles northwest of L.A. Police say the gunman and the victim had a history. More than one shot was fired, and a teacher received a pellet wound to the head. But police say he and another staffer convinced the gunman to surrender peacefully. It's also believed the gunman tried to fire on a second classmate, but missed the student. They say that it belonged to the suspect's brother. It's Friday. That means tacos and free mugs are on us. All you have to do is stop by and say hi to Uncle Fred. We'll tell you where. That's right. It's still to come. The votes are in at 537. What Cedar Park decided about controversial signs in their city at 549. Austin's perception of the perfect man. Then at 556, beer for your dog. That's right. You heard me. There's got to be a song for that, I'm sure. And, <laughs> and uh, Jordan's five o'clock somewhere, right? Might as well include the dog. Sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> hey, you know what? If you're already thinking about getting those kids dressed for school, hey, temperatures today looking fantastic. Very spring like a little chilly this morning, but this afternoon, I think many of us will get into the 70s. Oh, yeah, it's been great for a big cool down over the weekend.
Good morning, folks. A look outside. A beautiful morning, a little crisp for some. Many of us are starting off in the 40s. We're not really seeing much fog. We actually had a little bit of that development yesterday. Today it's going to be mainly clear and actually pretty calm. Looking like a great Friday to head outside and enjoy the outdoors because we are looking at lots of sunshine and we are looking at very warm temperatures. So we might see some of these high clouds pile in throughout the day, but that won't really mess up your temperatures at all. Look at this 73 by this afternoon looking fantastic. And uh, it's looking like we'll start to see that cloud development as we go into tonight and tomorrow and then big changes as we head into the weekend. We are keeping our eye on this system, a very cold blast that will punch through. This is a look at Saturday morning. The cold front still going to be on the north side of Austin. So we'll start off tomorrow on the warm side. It looks like we might see a couple of showers ahead of this system. So we're putting a couple of showers in the forecast for your Saturday. Then this system will punch through and bring the chilly air as we go into Saturday night and into Sunday keeping a chance for showers, but nothing like the system we had earlier this week. And we'll stay on the cool side for most of next week as we have uh, the chilly air pretty much just stay staying in place. So here's your seven day. Look what we're looking at. Nice and warm today, but then we start to cool down after the weekend moves through. Notice this cooling trend, especially next week. We have a couple of nights where we'll hit the freezing mark, so make sure you take note of that and uh, take any precautions needed to make sure your pipes won't freeze and all that jazz as we go into next week. Time just turned 522. Let's take a look at your uh, traffic cameras right now. If you're about to head out the door, this is 183 in metric. Looking pretty quiet overall. Uh, haven't really seen too many accidents to uh, report on yet, which is uh, which is great news. So happy Friday to everybody. And if we can take a look at the map, folks, if you're heading in from that 130 toll down into the downtown area, you're looking at about a 30 minute commute right now. So we really haven't seen too many uh, traffic jams at all. If you look at the wide map here, it's showing a pretty pretty calm and quiet conditions as far as the traffic goes and uh, about a 20 minute commute from San Bas to 6th Street. Folks on Mopac, about a 10 minute commute from Burnett down into 5th Street. Guys. Uh, all right, thanks a lot, Jordan. Well, topping our Friday morning health watch, thousands of people may be having their kidney removed unnecessarily. A study in The Lancet finds that doctors are misdiagnosing many patients with a genetic disorder called TSC. Now, the condition causes tumors on the kidney. Doctors often mistake it for cancer and then remove the organ. Researchers say surgery is not necessary because medication can usually dissolve those tumors. Doctors say women who have had weight loss surgery should wait a year before trying to get pregnant. A British study shows there is a higher risk of miscarriage in the first 12 months after bariatric surgery. In some cases, women who got pregnant too soon after a procedure damaged surgical changes made to the stomach. And a breath test may soon be used to diagnose lung infections. Scientists at the University of Vermont discovered certain compounds show up in the breath if there is a lung infection. They developed an accurate test for mice and now they're working on one for people. On the flu front, there's a growing number of cases in Texas. Right now, Texas is one of 41 states with widespread flu cases. Hospitals here in Austin tell KITV they've seen a rise in patients. Emergency rooms and doctor's offices are packed these days as more and more people come down with the flu. The vaccines and treatments are there, but hospitals, counties and city authorities are prepared with a contingency plan for a major flu outbreak. Hospitals are working together with city and county health authorities and schools, establishing an emergency plan for such events like pandemic flu. Back when the H1N1 virus first came out, we all remember that they erected makeshift areas to see patients in tents to help process people faster. Health officials say it's something they monitor daily right now, but patient demand has not required that so far. Now, to help you get the answers to the questions you have regarding the flu, we've put together a phone bank for later today. We'll have Scott and White healthcare experts on hand to answer your questions. Tune in right here to KI News at 5 o'clock. Well, if you use Ambien, listen up. It now appears less is more. The makers of Ambien and other sleeping pills are going to have to lower the dosage of the drugs. The Food and Drug Administration is ordering drug companies to cut the dosage in half for women. And it's also recommending lowering the doses for men, but that won't be mandatory. The move is based on new research that shows that the higher dose can cause morning drowsiness, which can lead to car accidents. Speaking of accidents, if you haven't heard, KITV has embarked on a year-long project to make our streets safer. Yeah, this is a huge issue, especially around our schools. And KITV's Fred Cantu has a special guest this morning who can tell us more as we kick off today's Fridays with Uncle Fred. Yeah, we've been doing this for a couple of months now, trying to make our streets safer. And uh, I thought that we should talk to an expert on this issue. And with us this morning is uh, Claire Eckert, uh, Claire Lee Eckert. Good morning, Claire Lee. Oh, morning, sir. Now, Claire Lee is celebrating 30 <coughs> years as a school crossing guard. I want to congratulate you on that. 
Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Now, now what, what is it like uh, guiding our kids and making sure they cross the street safely? Uh, it, it's just, it's just uh, very rewarding to know that I can uh, mm -hmm. be out there and show them how to do, mm -hmm. uh, to walk across safely so that when they're on their own and out somewhere else, that they know how to uh, follow the safety rules. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got a lot of folks who are getting ready for work, getting ready to hit the roads. What do you want to tell them as, uh, 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 to warn them before <coughs> they come to the school crossing zone? Uh, slow down. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you um, mm -hmm. pay attention to the guard that is crossing the students, mm -hmm. not yeah. using cell phones, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and just give uh, us time enough mm -hmm. to get across before you able to go across or want to turn. Mm -hmm. now, what do you think of all this attention mm -hmm. you're getting with your big anniversary here? Oh, this was a little shocking to me, but I appreciate it, and uh, I'm hoping that I can make it uh, worth everybody's while and very fulfilling. And I asked you yesterday uh, <coughs> what your long-term <coughs> career plans were, and, and, and you told me that you love what you're doing. I love what I'm doing, and I'm hoping I can do it quite a few more years. Okay. Clearly, we'll be talking more uh, with her in our next half hour. Imagine that, 30 years in front of Cassis Elementary co uh, School, keeping our kids safe. Back to you. Yeah. That is awesome. That yeah. is awesome. And, and it's important to pay attention when you're going through school zones or anywhere that children could be and families walking. Definitely. So we appreciate that, Fred. Well, procrastinators, listen up, where you can clear out your tree this weekend. That's right, plus a check on your time saver drive times and your weather every 10 minutes this morning with meteorologist Jordan Steele.